So, Nativot Shalom, and we do the Omer. So, page Shin Yud Zayin, it's from volume B, about the Chagim and the Shlosha Regalim, etc. So, page Shin Yud Zayin, Tafkid Emeo, Sfira Shinu Yamao, it's the purpose of the, uh, the day of counting, and changing the Mahut. Mahut is the... Uh, being or the essence of a person who's for the lachem of what a shabbat right so we know this famous pasuk that we need to count after the shabbat pesach is considered to be shabbat so it's right after the first yom tov right you will count 50 days and then you're going to bring a new sacrifice to hashem and said needs to explain the end of the pasuk and that you will sacrifice so it's looked like it is related to the second pasuk, that from where you dwell, you're going to bring two breads. So this type of offering you have to bring from the new, new wheat. So, but, but if it, that's the case, it should be actually written in the pasuk of from the place that you will dwell, you're going to bring. And now it's, it's, it's written in the way of the Pasuk Shesefartem Lachem, that about you counting and you bring the offering. From the place you dwell, you're going to bring the sacrifice. Okay, if the place from where we're supposed to dwell, bring it, so write it over there. Why why the Torah write it in the Pasuk that's talking about counting? That's the question. One of them. Also, so, so, so from that we understand that bring the new offering related to the sphira. Okay. Another way we can uh, I can explain or another thing to explain the Lashon when it says Omer Atenufa Nufa it's like uh, uh, weaving, waving like elevating something swinging something like that right when you bring something up or whatever it's called in English the proper word so it says here, Omer Atenufa. And also in the Shte Lechem of, of Shavuot, it says, the Lechem of the Tenufa. Right? But we, we also found that there was a Tenufa, right? And also when uh, Moshe was uh, lifting up all the Leviim, think about it, each one he was holding and up, down, up, down, right? But Moshe or Aaron? Moshe, Moshe was doing it, I think. No, the Aaron waved the Levium. What? I thought the Kahan waved the Levium. I, I thought it's Moshe, but okay, fine. Maybe it's him. So we found the Inyana Tenufa Gam Beshar Korbanot, also in the other sacrifices. But this two specific one, the Omer Atenufa and Lechem Atenufa, they especially they're called about the Korban itself by the Tenufa. That's like the title of it. And for sure there is a reason. And we can say according to what Mefarish Maran Admor Balbet Avram Zechuzor Genalenu, on behalf of his father Admor, I don't know what the acronym says, Badash Memi Baruch, I'm not sure, Zechuzor Genalenu, in the Pasuk, right? So we have in the Tehilim, Adamu Behemato Shia, that Hashem will save human and an animal. And he says it's a hint about the Avodat Yemea Sfira, the work of the day of counting. He had the Omer because bring the Omer, right? The bundle of the of the uh, of the wheat, right? But chilat emea sfera, they bring from from wheat. Actually, it's not wheat, sorry. It's a grain, barley, right? So they bring from the barley, which is an animal food, right? This is what you feed your cows. And the two lechem, the two bread that they sacrifice in the Chag Shavuot, that was from wheat, which is a human food, and the reason. When we were in Egypt, we were like Behema, right? As I said, just says on the Pasuk, that Hashem took him a nation within a nation, that we were like a fetus in the womb of a Behema. We were sinking in the 49 level in the tomb of Egypt, surrounded with that. And it says in the Sefer Be'er Avram, she said that the redemption from Egypt couldn't be possible 
by the Taharat Amidot, purifying the Midot, בכיוון שהייתה זו כזו התאבות המידות, התאבות, it's to, to get uh, thick, spiritually thick, like steam, right, steams in the air you don't see it, but when they get into something cold, suddenly you have water. It's called התאבות, like something that gets fat, but again on a spiritual level. So we were מגושמים, right, התאבות it's also מגושם. She so said it couldn't be possible by purifying the midot because we were so so megusham at the time that we couldn't even start the process, and the redemption was only from the from the faith that we had. So we all know we were still in the forty nine level when we left on the first day, right? We didn't purify ourselves. That was the process that actually started after we'll be able to left Egypt. Then the day of counting begin, but this is actually the process of. Purifying the midot that we converted from and elevated from a behema from an animal into a human, and this is the main purpose, akadosh, right? The holy purpose of the day of counting, to change the reality into a new reality, because we cannot get or achieve the kabbalat Torah when we are still animal. We have to be in a level of human. And now we can see that according to what it says, you counted after the Shabbos, right, which is uh, uh, after Pesach, started to count the Omer, so at the clear car, it says, a new offering, it's a hint for the Kabbalat Torah, which, because we have another Pesukim, in other places, it said, that every day the Torah should look to us in our eyes like it's new thing, that we should never be bored from it. It's new thing every day. So they make like Kalva Homer. If it says new about the Torah and the offering, it says new offering, so they are related to each other. Which means, it says that we have a hint that when we're going to bring a sacrifice, it has to be a new one. And it has to be related to the avoda of counting the Omer, which is seven times seven, right? Seven weeks, which will be 50 days. And that's a process for us to turn from behema to a Adam, a human. We can also say in the mashmaut, in the meaning of the mincha chadasha, a new offering to Hashem, according to what it says, that the main work for us in the day of the counting is to renew ourselves like a new creation, a new person, right? Slowly going from behema to a person, to a human. And that's the meaning of ikravte mincha chadasha, like a new one. We are become new, a new reality, a new existing. As it says in the Rashi Tevot, it says in the, in, the, in the letters of mincha chadasha, it's the letter memchet, right? Like uh, 48, which is the advantage about of, of the person on the behema, because the behema doesn't have and Shilton. So Memchet is, is Moach, right? So the Behemoth doesn't have a wisdom, right? And it could not rule the Homer, but we have a wisdom, we have a brain, Moach Adat, and we can rule, and we understand, and we can speak, communicate. So the Maran Admor, Balbet Avraham, he said that the main fixing, the main tikkunim in the day of the Sfirah are the Shabbos, the Shabbatot. Because it says actually, Sheva Shabbatot Mimot Yena. It doesn't say seven weeks. It says Sheva Shabbatot. We understand that seven Shabbos says is actually seven weeks, but the Torah is emphasizing Sheva Shabbatot. She said, Shelefachot Shabbatot. So at least if the six days of the counting of each week are not perfect, at least the Shabbat should be perfect. And that Shabbat is capable, it is gula for us to become or to, to use that process to become a new creation, a new person. And that's our, our, our chance. And this is Shabbat. And according to this, it will be explained what our, our sages says in the Zohar HaKadosh. It says that the day of the counting, it's like the Sheva Nekiim, like the seven uh, clean day that the woman uh, needs to count, right, to purify a woman for a husband. And that's coming before Chag HaShavuot, right? So Pesach was the, uh, the engagement and Shavuot is actually the wedding day. And that's why we need to be prepared. And he said, and it's a question, V'tamua. So why are you counting seven weeks and not seven days? Why seven times? 
So the Maran Admor Bal Bet Avram Zichotor Galani says that the days of the Tshuva between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, right? We have a Seret Yom Tshuva, but you take out the two days of Rosh Hashanah and you take the one day of Yom Kippur, you're left with seven. So you said these seven days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are for the seven Midot. Mm-hmm. And it's also including in the Midot. But the day of the uh, of the counting, there are seven times seven Gambi Pratuta Midot. So if you're looking at the... Uh, and the, the Sidurim, when it says about the counting, et Sfira, Yesod, Malchut, O, Tiferet, etc. So the first one was the uh, Chesed Shebe Chesed, like the grace of the grace. So each, you have seven Midot, and in each Midah, you have that day, like a sub Midah for it, that they, they, they keep changing. Right? So you said the seven days between Rosh Hashanah and Kippur, yeah, this is for the Midot. But now, Dar Sfira are the, uh, like the, uh, the fine-tuning of each Midah. Seven times fine-tuning for that. And that's why I said Partuta Midot, like the specific things in the Midot, the seven specific of each Midah. And that's the explanation that the purpose of the day of counting is indeed for us to be a new creation in order for us to get the Torah. So it's all a preparation for the Torah. And I've said, you said, right? In each and every generation, a person should see himself like it is if he left from Egypt. He's the one. So I said, in each and every generation, a person is obligated to who would like to, to see himself literally that he's the one that goes going out from Egypt and to change, to flip from a, a fetus in a, in a womb of an animal to a person, to a human being. And according to that, and that the purpose is to, to turn yourself from behema to a man, to a to person. And therefore, the sacrifice of Chag Shavuot, they brought from a machal adam, food of, uh, of humans, right? That's why wheat. But before that, we brought from barley, which is for the behema, because that was the level at the time that we were there. And it will be explained. So the omer of the tfa, the bender that the, the bringing and the weaving, waving, and the bread of the tenufa. According to the Asipur, there was a story from the Rav Kadosh Rabbi Aron Gadol Mikarlin, Zechutor Galanenu. So he said that his avodah was a keruv. It was mekar of people to, to Hashem, right? And many repent. And once he met a person that was so distant, Rechman from Hashem, that talking couldn't help. So what he did, he hauled to his clothes and he was shaking him. You listen, stupid, there is Hashem. Do tshuva. Right? But he shake him and he said, until when you're going to walk on, on the on, on earth, right? On the on the face of earth, like this. So then he fell on the ground, that person, and he was crying and he said, Okay, I want to repent, I want to repent. Later, Rabbi Aaron explained that that person was really disconnected from the root, the Khanal Islam. So talking couldn't help because he couldn't hear. But when he was shaking him, then he connected him back to the root. <laughs> right? Shock therapy. And then he was waking up from where he was, and then he started to do tshuva. So the same way it says, yes, you're right, uh, Lee. It says, and if Aaron et Alevim, Aaron was weaving, uh, waving the uh, Delvim Tnufa Lifne Hashem. I thought it was Moshe, but okay, it was Aaron. And he said that the Tnufa was, Sha'aron tilted at Kol Levim and Tsiuto, like he was shaking off the uh, the uh, the reality of each Levi. And then the Levi were sanctified to Avodat Hashem. And in order for them to be in a higher level, to be servant to Hashem, then that Levi was need to be shake off all his existing, all his reality, and elevate him to a higher world. So that's why everyone was doing that. And therefore it says, it says, it doesn't mention, mention in the Torah, the time of Chag Shavuot, right? We don't have a time. We have only a continuation of with Sfartem, but we know that after Pesach, 50 days, then it's uh, Yom Shavuot. And it said that the, the day of the Sfira are like Chola Moed Aroch, like a long Chola Moed between after Pesach, mm-hmm. right? Starting on the first day, after the, the first day of Pesach. And the end of that Chola Moed is in the Chag Shavuot. 
And he says in the, in the middle of this Yemei Chagos Shechol HaMoed, these are the holiest day in the year that Hashem gave us to purify us from our shell, from our thing that blocks us, from anything that uh, keeps us away from Hashem. And it's a process for us to turn from a behema, an animal, to a person. A person that controls his evil inclination, controls his desire, controls everything. And then the purpose for that is to be able to be a vessel to, to receive the Torah. Shkoyach. Ah.